power can you feel the power of the 21 the father the son and the holy spirit i'm your host jerry was live my co-host is kimmy kim my special guest tonight is b speak life is here that's right she's here to give us some encouragement some inspiration that's right and some direction that we need it that's right y'all it's a hard y'all we need some help that's right it's tough out there all right, everybody, we all need to be lifted up and encouraged at all times. The Bible is a great source for encouragement. The Bible is a living word of God. It feeds us through the promises of God found in Scripture. In Philippians 4, 4, 7 reads, Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice and let everyone see that you unselfish and considered all you do. 
Remember that the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything instead. Pray about everything. Tell God you need. And don't forget to thank Him for His answers. You do this. You do this. And you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your mind in Jesus Christ. Amen. Can the house say amen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, y'all, we're going to have a good time, y'all. We got special guests in the house. She called herself the Speak Life. And I don't see Kimmy Kim here. Kimmy Kim, you out there, Kimmy Kim. Radio time. John 14, 6 said, Jesus answered, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John eleven twenty five. 25, Jesus said to her, I'm the resurrection and the life. One who believes in me will live even though they die. Praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in his mighty heavens, praise him for his mighty deeds, praise him according to his excellent greatness, praise him with trumpet and sound, flute and harp, tambourine and dance, strings and pipes, praise him y'all, let's praise him, let's thank him, that's right, alright let's get our prayer on everybody, yeah yeah, shout out to Total Life Changer, Daynet Watson, thank you Daynet. Thank you, PTI. That's right. Go out to PassesTime.com. If you need some college credits, you're interested in getting your associate's degree, your bachelor, your master, your doctor, check out Dr. Paul Kelly. Email him at PassesTime at Yahoo.com. That's right. Get your credits, y'all. Time to get that education, y'all. Go to the next level. Dear Father, please help us to rest in your happiness to allow a smile to linger on our lips, to dwell within a wonderful memory, to walk back through sunlit places. Please keep, keep us awake with hope. Engage with life in all variety To take in the beauty of other joys To teach the souls that people thankfulness Please help us to sing with faith Close our heart always To help us to carry the truth close to our heart always And rejoice in a new life Peace as we age Please help us to indulge in love To breathe in the sweetness of intimacy To taste the kindness of friendship To feel a warmth of embrace Help us God not to meet us Miss a single drop of heaven To catch each moment and drink great joy of life. All right, everybody, you're listening to Late Night with Jerry Rose Live Worldwide and my good friend Kimmy Kim from Relations Radio. If Kimmy Kim is on the air, and we'll check out later on, see what she's up to. All right, y'all, we got a special guest tonight, and we're going we're gonna to have a good time tonight, y'all. It's always good to have guests in the house, find out what's going on in the world today. We just can't just live off our own principles all the time, y'all. We got we to see out, seek out the help of the experts, all right? And this young lady, let me see, what she said, her global motto is, the more we speak life, the more we can see the positive outcomes manifest. I like that. And that's all we're going to say. We're going to let her tell us who she is. All right, Miss V. What's going on, Miss V? Welcome to Positive Power. How you doing? Thank you. I'm fantastic. How are you? Am I right now? I just went for, I had to go for a short walk. The dog had to go out. I had to take the doggy out. And then I said, uh oh, I got to bring the servers up. But we back. We're feeling good. It's Monday. It's, it's hot. You know how Mondays go sometimes? Not always just playing. But, you know. Yeah, it's like that sometimes. Yeah. But guess what? We, keep, we pick up and keep it moving. That's right. We keep it moving. Stay positive. That's right. Well, Miss V, coming That's out right. of the gate, I, I usually have my co-host. I, I, I didn't hear from her today. I thought I heard from her. I might have been dreaming that I heard from her. But anyway, <laughs> tell us, who is Miss V Speak Life? Who is she? Well, thank you. And, you know, Jerry, I am a woman of multiple layers. I'm an author, an independent consultant. I'm a speaker, host of a radio show, and I'm a facilitator, trainer. I have workshops available to our community. I have a nonprofit. as I work there as an executive director, right. and I'm an independent consultant. I help others with their small business development and personal development. All right. So I'm a certified life coach. 
Yeah, man, yeah, I've been hearing a lot about the world of life coaches this past weekend. Yep, shout out to um, life coaches of Arkansas. We're here in my studio shooting out some commercials and everything. Yeah, that's a that's a growing industry. Yeah. And you know, we had a chance to talk a little bit about it on the set here, but we want, we want to know exactly what is a life coach in your, in your own words? A simplify for those of us who think it's a psychiatrist or a psychologist or a counselor. You know, help us out. Great question. Not a psychologist, not a not a uh, counselor. There is certified training that you can have, but we simply help and aid others in various areas of their life. So, I, as a personal development coach, want my task and my niche is to help persons that are perhaps stuck mm-hmm. in various areas in life. They just don't know how to move forward from where they, from their current position, and I assist them get un, in getting un, unstuck. Amen. That's that's, right. that's one area. Yeah. As as far as a small business development, some people will have a, an idea in their mind, but they don't know how to bring that idea to life. That's what I do. I help them bring it to life. That's right. Now, you know, you, you got a lot of people that have big dreams, <laughs> but they. Sometimes they leave the earth and take it with them. <laughs> now, what do you call those people? What do you call those people? They got you vision. cut out just for a second. Oh, Repeat sorry. the question for me. Yeah, what, I said. I said sometimes you got you got a lot of people that's walking this earth with great visions, great dreams, and can really make an impact in this world. But they they end up checking out before um it can happen. You know, <laughs> like they said, they always say some of the the richest ideas are in the graveyard. You know, is this the people never you, got it off the ground. And that's why I live the way I do. It's time for all of us to speak life. We speak life over ourselves, speak life over our family, speak life over all of our endeavors and, and every action that we make. You know, we're to walk in love with our brothers and sisters, and we have a hard, it seems as though we have a hard time doing that. Yeah. But when we reach out and pull back those persons that are left behind and we consider other people and put out walk in other people's shoes, mm-hmm. maybe our mindset can be uh, broadened just a tad bit to, to help other people. Yeah. A lot of times we only consider ourselves and it's a really selfish world that we live in. And the more we gain a desire to love our fellow brothers and sisters, the more we have a desire to help and reach them and help them grow as you're growing and developing. You know, a lot of times we talk about the crab in the barrel mentality mm-hmm. and being a crab in the barrel, it's pretty difficult to pull each other out of that mindset, but it takes one. It only takes right. one, and then we spread out like a wildfire. That's right. That's what we got to do. You know? And sometimes it starts with radio. You know, radio is real big in the black community. Yes. And, um, you know, just, That's I mean, right. You see, you know, a lot of people travel in those circles, like, you know, just like FM radio. You got your, you got your Steve Harvey followers. You got your Tom Joyner followers and your Ricky Smiley followers. And, and, and even even back in the day, even further, we think about um, my man, um, uh, Michael Bazin, when he had a bit over yes. you know, 45 and older uh, crowd, you know. So if we all would collaborate together, we'd be a powerful species. <laughs> That's what I would say. Anyway, right. before we move on, we got Kimmy Kim from Relations Radio and Magazine, the CEO. She's here to help me interview you. So welcome, Kimmy Kim. How you doing? I'm good, Jerry. How you guys doing? Awesome. Good, Kimmy Kim. Yeah. How you doing? <laughs> Fantastic. Loving this uh, you? conversation. I, yes, ma'am. I, I get this uh, time messed up because I'm still on this, um, the one hour before. So please, excuse ah. me. I'm so sorry about this, Jerry. Yeah, time, yeah, what happened again? Back. Yeah, our time went back. So did your did your time move or, or your time didn't move? Is that what happened? It goes back. My oh. time goes back. Okay, because we went back too. So so nine o'clock, our nine o'clock is your eight o'clock, right? Yeah, I'm eight o'clock um, here. So I'm thinking it's going to be ten o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So I was like, I got another hour. I was like, uh. oh, it's nine o'clock. <laughs> Now, Eastern Standard Time, so please forgive me. Yeah, my bad, too. And, uh, I tried to tag you, but, you know, I was a little running behind today. You know, the day was marketing today. So, um, okay. my, I usually go on Sundays, but I had to do it today. We had company all weekend. 
All right, well, welcome, Kimmy Kim. We got uh, Miss uh, Miss V. Speak Life is on the line. She's uh, she's all of that in a bag of chips. So uh, hello, hello. I I love your pleasant voice. How do you talk oh, about your pleasant voice? I mean, have you <laughs> always always had it, or you have to go through some trials and tribulations to get to this peaceful voice? You know something? I never noticed it. Lately, people have been telling me how much they like my voice. You know, I used to sing in the choir, but I would sing really low and then uh, minister of music. I need you to sing out a little more. I would sing out. They want to give me a solo or two, but I would sing so low. <laughs> Just singing so low. <laughs> you said solo. I like that. So I like her. She's amazing. No wrong with that. No, we... Yeah, we, we, we have gifts and talents that we hide because we don't know they're there. But it starts with what you just did, and I thank you for it, giving me a compliment and telling me that. Amen. Yeah, your voice is amazing. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Oftentimes, you know, we, we, we as people, we don't compliment each other enough. We are mm. bullies, and that's one of the things that I like addressing is just lowering the uh, impact that being a bully has on our immediate community, yeah. you know, yeah. saying things that hit below the belt and mm -hmm. instead of encouraging one another. That's right. Exactly. That's enough of that. But that's why we at Positive Power, we Positive believe power. in encouraging and inspiring and uplifting our people. That's all we do. Yes. That's right. That's why I'm here. That's right. Yeah, I, I, that's right. I recruited you. I appreciate Amen. your platform. That's awesome. Yeah, I saw you out there on social media doing your thing. I said, oh, I got to have on my show. Got to have. I got to change Thank things you. up. Yeah, we got to change it up. But tell you what, Lee, we're going to take a quick, quick music break and um, get, get Kimmy a chance to get comfortable and everything. And we'll be right back with Ms. V, Speak Life. All right? So hold tight, everybody. All right. And this one is called <laughs> Bleeding Hearts by Kimberly Adair. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast.
You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. All right, that was by Kimberly Adair. Kimberly Adair, that song is so hot. One of my favorite songs out there. Thank you. So, Kimmy, Kimberly was on the show. You can catch her. Uh, she's going to be on Pastor's Time coming up. We, uh, we had to reschedule her. She was due to come up on Tuesday, but we're going to reschedule. We let you guys know when she will be back. Awesome young lady. Also, y'all, don't forget about PTI Bible College, right? Pastor'sTime.com. Check it out, y'all. You can you can go out to pastorstime dot com and check out Pastor Paul, Dr. Paul Kelly, the Dean and President. All right, you guys looking for extra credits? Man, he makes it so easy for you. So you got to go out to the website and check it out. Very affordable. It's a good time to start to get your education started. That's right. And um, I mean, he makes it easy for you. And um, it's all transferable to our, our our parent school. That's right. To follow the Princeton uh, uh, theology program. So um, give him a call or email him at pastors time at yahoo.com all right friday nights is our big night y'all you gotta join us with um next man up uh is moderated by dr paul kelly got ron e jefferson and johnny ross from positive power and also we have special guests we got miguel perfecto esposito he's actually a minister out in seattle washington and he joins us and also brandon sampson who um basically writes our commentary our topic for those shows. And then you can catch uh, Paula G at 11.30. Uh, she interviews guests on late night. And then at 12 o'clock, you got the ladies of radio. That's right, the Christian party line. And they carry on the topic from Next Man Up. But we hear the, the lady versions of it. All right? So you got to come on and check us out. Right, Kimmy Kim? Got to yeah. check us out. All right. And don't forget to check out Kimmy Absolutely. Kim. Kimmy Kim, you can find Kimmy Kim's radio station streaming right here on Positive Power. And also, we on Spotify, iTunes, and iHeart Radio and YouTube. All right? So, you got your choices, y'all, depending on how, which one streams the best for you. All right, we're talking to Miss V, Speak Life. All right, Miss V, so tell us a little bit, how did you get into life coaching? I mean, you know, it started to become really popular. You know, I see a lot of professionals getting into this. They, they want to share their, their experience and their knowledge. You know, living other people better, you know, to reach their potential. So how you get into it? I think it, it came to me. I, it, it wasn't something that I thought I was going to do. I went to school to be a chemist. I didn't. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> I, I thought I wanted to go and blow up labs and what have you. <laughs> <laughs> this was uh, something that came to me just a couple of years ago. Uh, and just in learning a little more about me, you'll notice I'm a domestic violence survivor. Oh, wow. And after going through counseling myself and realizing that it's a obstacle that anyone uh, in those circumstances can face, they can absolutely overcome them as well. I wanted to reach back and assist and help others, but God actually put it on my heart to start a nonprofit and do just that, assist other uh, survivors that have gone through the storm, gone through the struggle, and aid them in getting their lives back in order. Uh, the, the name of the nonprofit is Shifted Masterpiece Incorporated, and we support, we're a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We serve and support domestic violence survivors and at-risk youth. The at-risk youth piece comes in as I watch my son, and wanting to make sure he would absolutely be able to be in a position of greatness and not have to worry about the things of his past or to look at look back on different things that happened to me. How does he then move on to getting over the things that he may have observed or not observed, but knowing and understanding what happened? And also just for the other kids that are out there, they they absolutely need us. This generation that is uh, fo that's following behind us now needs people. They need mentors. They need counselors. They need assistance to help them understand that all the dreams that they have in life, they can meet and overcome all of them. They can have all of the, the things that they want. They can live as fearless as they want. They can live boldly as they want. They can chase all the dreams that they have in life, but we want to 
we want to do things that encourages them to move in that direction. And the people, the, the lack, we have a great need for people in that area. The number of resources, the number of, of our black males that are doing this, we need more. There, there is never enough of people to come back and help and support. And that's where I come in. I help pull that group of mentors together, me being a mentor, aid, consultant for those uh, other people. That's, what, that's where I fall in. That's my uh, passion. And after experiencing certain things, I realize now that that is also my purpose. Amen. Amen. All right. I mean, Kimmy Kim, you got a question for, for Ms. V? Absolutely. I love the fact that you're uh, being real, that you did not plan this. So I know it takes space to really just go ahead and do it. What was that that um, that confidence that it was from God and you must do this? Because one thing I learned about God, he's going to make you, well, not make you, but he's going to draw you into the things that he wants you to do. So how did that come about? Well, Kimmy, you know, I have people that just naturally approach me. They come to me, they would come to me at my, my day job. They would come to me just randomly. These strangers will just approach me and want to just start talking to me. They'll tell me their, their life story. And I would always sit and wonder why are you talking to me? Now, granted, I would sit and talk back right back to you. We sit and <laughs> have a little chit chat. I don't know you from Adam, but I'll, I'll do it and I'll listen to you. But that's just the type of person that I am. Now I had a coach shout out to Dr. Shiva Quinn. If she's listening right now, but she took me through a, a, a lesson or a series of activities and finding my niche. One of the activities she told us to do was to reach back and go to some of our friends and family or ask others what they thought we were good at. And just like you, Kimmy, a lot of people say, well, see, we like your voice. <laughs> we, it's so voice. soothing. It's so relaxing. Thank you. And other people would talk to me about how I'm good with children or they'll tell me how they enjoy listening to me talk about or sharing different stories that I've experienced. You know, just a various a variety of things that they liked about me, and I wrote all of the compliments, all the things that I took out as, as compliments, but I looked at it and I said, these are things that I would not have used to build who I want to be, to build where and what direction I should move in for my life. And as I put all of this together and then as I go and research other areas that I can, or fields that I can work in, this is what came to me. It's just assisting and helping others get their life back on, on track. So that, that it started with me knowing that my experience needed to be written down. So one of my first books is Shifted Masterpiece, a story of love and horror in Savannah, Georgia. We just released it in October of 2018. And in this release, my, or I should say, when I started writing the book, I started the book uh, about three years ago. But I started the book because the events that happened and occurred were surreal. And because when you go through something like that, yeah. and it seems like you're, you're living in a movie, well, then you need to go ahead and write the movie out. Mm -hmm. oh. There's no reason that you would keep information like that to yourself. Because, and I, I think after going to counseling myself, I realized that because the information is not readily available or because we don't talk about this enough in our community or, or just to other people, we're not sharing information. We scoop everything under the rug. We're, you know, just so um, non-resilient. We're, we're, we're non-transparent. And when we do that, lives are lost. People end up dead because 
of a lack of information, a lack of knowledge, a lack of wisdom. Perhaps sharing your story can help save someone else's life. And through, yeah, through my transparency, Kim, it's um, not so much about me at this point. You know, some people think, oh, well, you wrote this book for yourself. No. It, it, was it therapeutic for myself? Absolutely. Was it heartbreaking for myself? Yeah, I'll go through several pages in the book, and I uh, I don't get upset. But I, I look back, I'm like, well, who is this woman that you're talking about? I don't think that the woman in this story is not who I am today. Mm. Mm. I, you know, I, I've grown, I've developed, and I, you know, things that I did during that, that time, I'm in, I'm in such a different place right now. And that's when we talk about change. You know, Jerry, that last song that you played, she, what I got out of the song was change. Mm. That was the key word that I, that I had. So, you know, people can experience a lot of change in, in their life. Maybe they're experiencing change mm-hmm. right now. It could be a career change, a, a big move, a child going off to college, or, you know, they're facing a huge change. But every day it seems to hold them, you know, uh, quite a few variations and challenges. Mm -hmm. And it can be unsettling and downright scary sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, but when we learn to either embrace those changes and actually see how change can be a good thing, that's when we can come out and see how God has been able to work all Mm -hmm. things together for our good. That's right. Right. And, you know, uh, it's funny you say that. Um, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think Kimberly Adair shared that same story. Um, and she's, I think she's out there now t- telling her story. Of course, last month was uh, Domestic Violence Month, and, and we had a radio program that was on a Monday night that was devoted to that awareness. Um, the 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 people that's that's that, that's telling their story right now, the survivors, and of course, you know, they speaking for those who did not survive. Just like today, and and our hearts go out to those people in Chicago. It was a, it was a, it was a, a another active shooter event occurred today out in Chicago at a hospital. Um, it started with this guy walking with this woman, and he just opened fire on her. He just shot her several times in her chest. Um, wow. what do these guys look like? You know, when do the women supposed to say, no, it's enough is enough and try to escape, you know, cause we put the information out there as much as we can. I mean, I, I see it everywhere. You know, the numbers are there, but you know, what's keeping some of the women um, trapped in, in your own words, Ms. V what's, what's, you know, this, um, who knows what the story was like, but it ended tragic, very tragic. Yeah, well, Terry, you know, we're, we live in a world of fakeness. We, you know, reality TV is not reality. It's scripted. So when you put a scripted reality show in the hands of our youth, in the minds of everyone that's watching this story, we get a convoluted idea of what reality is. And so you you, you think that, uh, riches and glory and fame are instant. You think that uh, having a business, oh, well, I have a business, well, you're rich. You know, it, it's so many different things in our in our minds that's being poured into our, our minds and our spirits. We're not in tune with reality. Yeah, so well when, you, when you see these people that are still doing these things, we're still with a lot of hatefulness. We're not spreading love. No. You know, you ask some people, hey, what are you doing today? Oh, I'm vegging out on this XYZ hip hop show. Okay. Mm. You know, or, or something else that, that uh, you know, draws a lot of negativity into the atmosphere. But it, as we're walking around, we're, because we're not doing things that are more positive or doing things that will actually make us happy. We're doing things that depress us, mm. oppress us. And, you know, we, we, we're not, <laughs> we're not living a life where we can feel sunny on the inside. Yeah, yeah, feel, yeah, feel. What are you doing to feel the warmth and the brightness on the inside? Mm. And so, you know, with me choosing to be sunshine, 
those folks that are not living that way, it's all right. But when you choose to be around that negativity, that's what eats up on the inside of you. So when you go out into the streets or when you go out away from your home or when you come back home, you're angry. There's so many people that are just walking around angry Mm -hmm. right now. So you you miss the point of, not you, but those that have you know, are experiencing this, this bit of anger, they've missed the message. And that's what our job is. Right. Our job is to come back in and help them understand there's a different way, a different approach for you to develop so that you can go on to celebrating you yeah. so that you can go on and, and, and be a warrior, but a warrior that is fighting for a God and not a warrior out there just, about self. Mm-hmm. Now, Kimberly, now, now, one of the things, and, and, and hold tight for a minute, Kimmy Kim. Now, you know, like anything, just like now, you got people talking a lot about wellness. You know, that wasn't spoken a long time ago about, you know, health wellness. Even <laughs> insurance companies are actually uh, helping people get into the gym by paying some of their membership, some of the nicer ones. Why we don't hear enough about prevention, you know, teaching our young ladies and our young men how to respect, how to communicate. It's like, you know, it's like, you know, by the time they get to you guys, it's kind of too late. It's like they run away, they pack the kids up, you know, they're escaping. You know, some, some relationships can't be fixed. You know, what happened to the preventive part of it, peace? Where is that at? Is that out there? Yeah, I think somebody got their phone, got their speaker on. I do hear echo now. And somebody got that. You hear an echo? Yeah, Kimmy, you don't have you don't have your radio or something, or do you? No, mine is on mute. So that's not my phone. Okay, because I did hear something. Come and I don't talk about mute. So yeah, yeah. So, um, Ms. V, you don't have you don't have uh, anything coming on that you can hear the show. Yeah, I can. I'm. I'm. I'm I just have the phone on. Yeah. Because I did hear it sound like something I was getting feedback. Okay. I don't think it's on my end. I'm checking the outputs now. Okay. Well, go ahead. Well, go ahead and ask that question. So where, where's the preventive piece at? Does that exist? Are you asking me, Jerry, or yeah. Ms. Kimmy? Oh, yeah, Max, you. I'm sorry. I was looking at, I was looking at Kimmy Adair's name. Yeah. On the music list. For prevention, one of the, it starts with education. It starts with in 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 the beginning stages. And my theory, you said, is, is it possible? My theory is that it starts as a child. If you see us bullying one another, what are we doing to one teach others how to face the giants? But also, what are you doing to teach our kids to not be a giant, a mean one? What 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 are what are we doing there? So my my idea is that we start at a young age. Do I think my abuser was bullied as a child? Probably. Mm-hmm. Do I think he watched his mother being attacked? Pro- probably. Mm-hmm. You know, but those things he carried those things on to our relationship versus meeting me where I am. Yeah, but had what I, I often wonder what life would have been like had he not experienced those things at a younger age. Mm-hmm. Would our life have been different? Because he was a really nice guy. That's right. I think he it was it was just some things he didn't know how to manage his anger. And then you know we talked earlier about people going out. People are just so angry. We don't know how to manage and control our emotions we have to get to a point where we can do that so we're not getting so easily aggravated or upset over small things but when you get to a point where you where everything makes you blow up what do you do my my resource is talking to god that's my resource that's that's my fault that's where i fall back even though it hadn't always been that way right. because when I was going through that storm, I thought I was an angel. So when I started experiencing these things, I didn't realize, well, God doesn't think you're an angel. So I became angry at God mm. Mm. and then had to come back and repent and ask for forgiveness over that. 
mm-hmm. you know, but every, everyone doesn't, doesn't believe that. Mm-hmm. So as a community as, and as a society, that's where, again, that's where we come in and demonstrate and we show people how, and the how it starts there again at a young age. Well, okay. You didn't get to that. It starts with us writing these books that we have out here. It starts with the workbooks that we have out here to help you re- go through. It starts with counseling. Yeah. Everyone has a me- needs a good mentor that can help guide them along. And again, that's where our at-risk youth, they need help. Our black males are another resource that's absolutely needed. There's no reason that I can not, I should not be able to walk up to a successful uh, male and say, hey, can you mentor my young son? Make time. Mm-hmm. That's a charge mm-hmm. on, on what you guys have. You have all this, these great things going on for you, but how are you giving back? Oh, I start with my family. Okay, well, okay, your kids are grown now. Can you help me with my kids? Or can you help the brother that is not raising his kids and show him, you know, teach him, coach him along with, with, with where he is in life right now? Everybody needs a friend. Right. Every woman needs a friend. That's just how that's just how we are. We in in our community, we just gotta stop. And how about you know? I I have another thing. I talk about where we go into this whole thing of jonesing. You remember the the, the mama joke, mm-hmm. and you're you're telling these jokes about you, you hit right below the belt, and we can't do that. We're our job is to edify right. one can't another. Can't swing too low. <laughs> yeah. Kim, hey, Kim, you, Kim, you got a little experience in this area too. You want to piggyback off of this? Yes, um, I do, um, especially when it comes to motivating and also child raising. You know, I'm in a, I'm a single parent, so I have a 10 and a 13 year old, and we're mm-hmm. both girls, and they're going through their interesting stages. <laughs> <laughs> so I try to encourage them. I give them the things that they do um, well last so that it doesn't end on a bad note. So I tend to say, you do this. I, I prefer you to do it this way, but you do everything else well. You know, you're a wonderful person, student, but this is the only thing that we need to focus on. So everything else, you know, you're doing wonderful. I really believe you should, um, that's how I do my girls. I try to end it on a positive um, um, ending, so I don't want them to think that I'm always nagging. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And I don't believe in you. I told I told you I, I'm doing this because I told you so. So parenting is very important. You're so mm-hmm. right, and that's why. Back in those days, also it it took like their community to raise one child, mm-hmm. and we do need to be there for one another. We must be our sister's keeper and our brother's keeper. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So Kim, I want to ask you this: Kim, you ever you know fear you know that your daughter's going when I'm going to bring home that one guy and you can't identify him? He doesn't show the you know the ammo that most of these guys come with, you know, and you can't identify that until Absolutely. it's too late. You know, is that your greatest Absolutely. fear? Absolutely. So that's why I pray and I try to make sure that the next person I date that they will see the, a good example. I'm, I've been fortunate enough for them to be around good role models like men, like my mom, my dad, I'm sorry, not my mom, my dad and my brothers and cousins. So I do, they do see some really positive uh, men. So it's still up to their decision. You can put all the good information inside of you, I mean, in front of them, and it's still their decision. So when that do happen, I would just say, um, if that do happen, I have a plan. I'll let her know that you are much more than this. You are a queen. You deserve to be treated like royalty. Because I come from an abusive um, marriage, and I've been there. But the abusive was more so ver- verbal and mental because I Same never thing. knew anything about verbal and mental. But I knew about the physical. Yeah. Now, if you hit me, I'm going to hit you back. That never, it never got to that point. So, mm. yeah, it's like, so it's to like make the long story short, it's yeah. how you really uh, demonstrate how that child is to be valued. So I have seen some parents that really... They put men before their children, and I do pray wow. for them as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I see a lot of that too. Unfortunately, yeah. wow. Yeah. So now, now, do your brothers, do your brothers, do, do do your daughters see your brothers in relationships and see how they treat their 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 ladies, their queens? Do they get a the chance wives, to see that? Yes, yes. All right. They do, and they, 
You know, no one is perfect, but overall, yeah, I must say my my brothers are good. They work. They take care of the household. They make sure that um, they pay their bills. And, uh, you know, you're always going to have some ups and downs, but for the most part, they're good, mm-hmm. you know. I must admit, I am really proud of them. And then they're raising good sons to be responsible, you know. Mm-hmm. Both of my nephews are athletes and they're smart. And uh, it's a blessing to have that tradition that my parents have uh, given us and pass it down to the next children. That's right. Amen. But for the most part, my girls are really cool. They're just, you know, catty, you know. But <laughs> then we have to remember how we used to be. Sometimes I'd be like, Kim, what were you doing at 13? So then I have to silent myself. I'm saying, well, my girls are much better than I was. <laughs> Sometimes we tend to forget where we come from, too. So. Yeah, that's right. Different, different times. Now, now Ms. V, Ms. V, I remember when um, I had an opportunity to work with a health program. Uh, it was it was it was like a quasi part of a federal government program with uh, at risk pregnant moms, and they were young people. And uh, but what was so great about this program? It wasn't just for the young ladies. They they actually instituted a program for the fathers. So the fathers had to be part of a program. They didn't have to be with the young lady, but as long as they were the, they were the parent of the child, we wanted them. They didn't have to be dating her and they have to go visit her, but they wanted to have him in the program so they can teach him how to be a father and how to be a man and, and, and understand the response. And I thought that was a super program. I mean, they, they had the, uh, those, those, uh, the, the, the pieces in it from Africa, the, the affirmations, the abatement, all of that libation is what they call it. They had all of that instituted in the program. They, you know, the, Af- the African drums, the, the ancestry, they had all of that. And they're trying to reprogram these guys, try to take their minds out of the hood. And, 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 and understand where our people came from so they can understand that they're a man first. They're not a, a product of the environment. And I thought that was a really great program. And I, I'm hoping it still exists. Uh, it was through, um, I'm not sure if you guys remember Healthy Start. Salt and Pepper used to um, promote it like years ago, back in the 90s. But uh, they, they do still have some small pieces still together in the Baltimore area and I think uh, Ohio. A few other places, maybe. Are you familiar with that that type of program? Is this something that your program does? You kind of institute a little bit to get the fathers involved, or the, you know, both both parties. We we do not. Yeah, that's a great question. We don't work with. We work more with the survivors and the children. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if we have any uh, men that come and they need help with their businesses, we help in that area. But I do know some uh, businesses or uh, organizations in the area that have those type of services. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Just not that one in particular. Right. But it's something we need. We need more of them. Yeah, we do. That's a great program. The way you describe this, that's a really great one. It was. I used to go and we need more around here. Yeah, it, it, it was so powerful because I because I had a lot of the young ladies that I you know I was providing life counseling services to, and and a lot of times that's what they talk about. They wish that the, you know the, the they didn't have to have a relationship with the father, but they just wanted to have the the custody piece together. You know, be parents. You know, they didn't have to have relationships. Right. And then that man, they had to. Then we had to teach him how to respect. If she was in a relationship, that, that they, because you want that man to be able to respect her because the children are there. So we had to give them a chance to see that side of which they had never seen before. Cause you see where that kind of ends up most of the time in, in, in the hood. You know, is, it doesn't go well a lot of times. Or right. he just don't show up anymore for the kids. He's not there for the kids at all. You know? Well, Jerry, where do you think it all fell down? You know, has it always been this way for our community? Or do you think this is something that's happened over the last 20, 30 years? It goes to the 1800s when they were splitting our families up. (laughs) Then it just became Mm -hmm. part of our mindset that um, we, you know, like for me, I grew up in a neighborhood where both the, the, I mean, you know, everybody didn't get, the, the families didn't have it. 100% 100% together all the time, but they did their best to hold it together. But it was two parent households. Yeah. Uh, you know, growing up in the 60s and the 70s, um, you know, the families were so 
focus on trying to get their kids to the next level, to college. And, you know, they wanted them to do better than them. And I don't know whether now, because money is so important to people now that it splits up the families. <laughs> I don't know what the deal is. But I don't know. Back then, to me, the, the 60s and 70s and the 80s was just way different. And it's like couples don't even give themselves a chance anymore. You know? Wow. I really don't. You know, and I'm even talking about some of my friends. I remember all of my friends got murdered around the same time. And, um, wow, I think just half of them are still together. You know, it's like, um, it's like get to a point where, you know, the kids are out the house now. Because all of us, all of us at the point where we got kids either finish college or going into college. And it's like, okay, the kids are out of the way now. We was doing this for them. You have a great life. <laughs> See you later. Wow. You know? It's like uh, I'm going to find somebody else new and start over again. You know, it seems like it, it treat relationships like that now, like it's a, like like a bag of chips. It's a new bag of chips. You know, you got bake, you got fried. I want fried right now. You, know. <laughs> you want fried right now? Yeah. That's terrible. Yeah. So, fried is not healthy. Yeah. So it was, yeah, it's just I don't know. Um, and 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 now too, it you know, it's so hard for for people to cheat, you know, where before, you know, person when they had no idea what you was up to nowadays because they be tracking you. It's like suspicion is always the culprit. It's like suspicion. Where were you? You know, it's, it's right. not normal. <laughs> Something don't feel right. You know, why are you dressed like that now? <laughs> you know. We, can't even make right. a sudden change. It's like you can't even start wearing makeup, and they like start getting suspicious. Or oh, I know you wear your hair cut nice now. And I notice you're dressing a little better going to work. Who you who you checking out? <laughs> you know, it's just I don't know. Maybe it's just suspicion. I don't know. And and like you and two, and you and that was a great question you asked. I mean, what do you think? Is you think because um, there's not like the engagement? It's not a lot of engagement going on in the churches and the communities. It's not like um, the fellowship is missing with every everything right now. It, it, for me, it kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier about how our minds are not receiving reality and the perspective of how we should really walk and talk with one another. So if all of the reality shows and TV shows are showing that gangster lifestyle or they're showing the hood lifestyle and not or the, the glorified gangster or hood mm -hmm. lifestyle it's not showing us what we really need to see or no there's love. No love. with Just the money. with the drama yeah. yeah with the drama that's going on uh you know do i watch this show? yes there are shows that i watch that are absolutely foul and it's, but i realize <laughs> and recognize hey i'm pouring all this negative energy into my spirit right now mm -hmm. but because we don't know how to turn off and shut those things down and learn a little more how to become in tune with mind, body, and spirit, we're not allowing that more positive energy to, or the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us the way that he should. Amen. Kimmy, you want to piggyback off of that one? The reality shows, the the negativity. The, oh my that, we're having to the love movies. Yeah. Kimmy, when the last time we saw a love movie? <laughs> Tell me, when the last one? Where are they? They're not making them no more? Well, you said something that was very profound. Holiness is definitely important. And um, what do you think we can do uh, for the young people and the, uh, and the survivors? Because one thing I have come to realize, it's like really hard in the church to talk about domestic violence. So what do you think, or what do you find some of the challenges that we face when it comes to saying anything about it? Because um, I come from a domestic violence when it comes to uh, my husband was an elder. I have always wanted to ask that to someone because, unfortunately, you find some worship centers, they are very silent. <laughs> do you get that, too? Jimmy, one of... 
that that's a really big question mm. and i hope you don't mind me being candid and speaking oh, my mind right now because you know there are several larger artists in our community that have, you know, experienced domestic violence and what do they use or do with their platforms is, is up to them. Um, the church, that that's absolutely up to that pastor, the congregation, to drive the topics and the things that are seen in that church. That's a choice to shun and not um, highlight some things. Uh, now, here in the Atlanta area, now I've spoken at a, a church uh, over the last six months, and it's because it, it was for Women's Day, and they invited me in to speak about domestic violence. But there you have a pastor that was open-minded enough to allow me to come in and make that happen. Now, you have other churches, and perhaps you, and you never know, Maybe that pastor has an issue with it. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, because we as the congregation are humans from our human side of things, we don't um, re look at the pastor as being just that a person. They, we right. we over glorify them mm -hmm. to make them think that they're larger than life. But because it happens in their homes as well, and we don't address it, that just goes back to the whole issues that we have with, uh, and excuse me, is this not to step on toes or to knock anyone down, but mm -hmm. the whole situation with our priests and the issues that they have with our young boys. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't talk about these things. It's always shunned, and that's the problem. We have to become a little more vocal. But I, I think that's one of the things that I love about our young people now, our group of millennials. They speak their mind. Oh, yeah. And they are um, sometimes unapologetic about some of the things that they say, but they speak it. Mm -hmm. They don't, they don't, they're not going to be that group of people that um, sweep anything under the rug. Uh, they're going to be vocal about mm -hmm. uh, their experiences. Right. And that I, I love that about them. It's our generation that has the, a bigger issue of not wanting to speak our minds and use our voices for the greater good. Mm -hmm. We're afraid, you know, people are af afraid to speak up. And for that survivor that's listening or for that survivor that has gone through the storm, you know, it's, now is the time to speak up. Now is the time to um, stand out uh, and make others aware of the issues. And, you know, perhaps if we were a little more, you know, that what happened today in Chicago, Jay, would not have occurred. Mm -hmm. we, we, we don't know. That's why we use our voices now so that people can realize that they have an opportunity to, to sing instead of cry. Mm -hmm. But you know, too, even if they're singing for someone else, but also too, you know, you have people who's just so jealous, you know, they, they can't, oh, wow. you know, they don't want to share, you know, their life with anyone. They don't want to share, you know, and I think the kids, the millennials kind of understand what it's like, to, you know, what it is to share, how to, you know, find common ground, how they accept society, you know, even though they do, they all going through their share of bullying right now and they don't want to tolerate. So they spoke out. Remember, bullying been happening for many, many years. I remember growing, I watched a kid um, take a knife out because he was trying to defend himself from a bully. And a bully took it from him and killed him right in front of our school. And I was in eighth grade wow. when that happened, witnessing murder. But they 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 want to speak up against it. They want they want help. I mean, it's all it went all the way to the White House, if you remember, about anti-bullying. The, the NFL had put campaigns out on it. So you're right. They they're very assertive about what they want to tolerate, and they don't want you to make false promises to them. You know, you can't promise them something. You say, wait a minute. You told me if I go to college and then I get get my second degree, this is how much money I'm going to make. I won't be working at McDonald's and Burger King. But I am. What's up with that? You know, so they're not afraid to speak out. You're right about that. 
and they do put things out on the table. I mean, even my kids, you know, we just can't that. I thought you told me you was going to do this, and you you just can't give them any false promise. They're going to they're gonna call you out on it. And that's a good thing because hopefully it'll carry into their relationships as well, you know, so they don't go many years with a fake relationship, you know. All right. Let's take a quick break, and then we're going to come back with some more topic, some more Kimmy Kim, some more Miss V. So hang tight, everybody. This one right here, this, this, this young man, he really uh, impresses me a lot. I can't wait to get him on Next Man Up. This is Kel, it's called L.B. Robinson, and his, his song is called Praise Him. Let's get a little bit of a little cheering up, y'all. Here we go. All right. Slaughter. 
Worldwide Podcast. Hey, 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 my name is Davis and I'm from Haiti, but I'm living in Dominican Republic. I'm here, Positive Power 21. Jerry was live worldwide. All right, you tell them, Davidson. Davidson can make some coffee. I haven't had a, a good cup of coffee like that in three years. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out how he did it. It was so creamy and rich. Anyway, he, and you can find him in the Dominican Republic at the beautiful resort, Paradisa. Paradisa. I think that's it. <laughs> Whatever. Trying to get back there. Anyway, y'all, we talking to Miss V's Speak Life. She's a motivator, life coach. She's a CEO, nonprofit, it's helping young our young people out. And we have Kimmy Kim from Relation Radio Magazine. She's the CEO and just had an honors award honoring those who who um who are very influential in their communities, doing great things. So uh, congratulations, Kimmy, and that's that's great. Great stuff right there. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. It was definitely a great time in the, in the Lord. And uh, it was very uh, it was very rewarding. I got Jerry coming next year. Right, That's Jerry? Right. Coming next year <laughs> get my award. So I take I take honors. Because <laughs> I, I mean, that's a guarantee, right? That's a guarantee, Miss V, that I'm getting an award. <laughs> When they, tell, when they tell you, I, being oh honest. yeah, that's we right. don't, it's a war time. That's right. I don't do both. <laughs> Let me the reason why, because I really believe that God puts on your heart the servant leaders, and it's not really a competition. It's more so the impact that people have in the community. That's right. I'll budget for that. Yes. <laughs> Sitting out there in the audience with my fingers crossed. Please win. Oh, got me going up against people like Erica you. Campbell. How you supposed to? How you supposed to win against her? She was a Mary Mary. That was too tough. And I love Ms. V, and I love what you're doing because domestic violence is continuing. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's still silent, mm-hmm. unfortunately, and just to see that the work is continuing to be done is amazing That's because, right. like I said, I didn't know anything about verbal abuse. I was so ignorant from that until I experienced it for myself. I did not know no. it existed because we were taught, you know, the words don't hurt you, but they really do. So. Oh yes, oh yes. <laughs> yeah, I often wonder who 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 started that. It could have been a verbal hey, hey, abusive person. Hey, 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 <laughs> Stole me, break my phone. It's okay, my man. Started that. Who started that? <laughs> yeah. Started in the streets. That's when we got away from the term edify. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, um, where I come from, you know, that was like. That's how fights got started. You started, you know, cracking jokes, and then it got to the mother jokes, and next thing you know, fists are flying. Yeah, you but can't we, do the mom jokes. No. But we learned how to, you know, that teach you. I don't know. I guess it taught us to have a real strong backbone because, I mean, those guys can go deep, man. They went personal. But, you know, they'd be like your friend, you know, cracking on you. And then, of course, you know, they started having that thing called snapping, snapping on each other. And then I went to an engineering wow. school where it was predominantly boys. So, you know, we couldn't fight or you get kicked out of the school. So a lot of times there was a lot of um, verbal bullying going on, you know. It's, no. Yeah, you had to have a thick skin. You know, you're talking about four years of that. And you still had to get good, and you had to get good grades so you can graduate. So that was tough. You know, I, I couldn't imagine, you what? know, what it was like for some of those kids, you know, because everybody don't have it the same in the household. You know, and then just think about some of the kids that's coming to school who who living in a household with their abuse going on. You know, yes. it's crazy. Yes, mm. and I just learned also like calling like a child out of their name is abusive. You know, oh, you're stupid. You know that stuff grows up in them, and unfortunately, mm. that's why you see so many children. You know, when they become like ten or twelve, they're angry. Runaways the too. You know, yeah. that's, that's called, I mean, I know you guys heard a, a lot of, uh, our guests that's been on the show, you know, sometimes that, that's what drove them out of the household was, you know, an adopted parent or a foster parent or, or aunt, you know, raising them the abuse. They just couldn't take it no more. The verbal abuse sometimes was, uh, wasn't, wasn't something they could tolerate and they just decided to take the chances in the street. So you're right, Kimmy, yeah. that, that, that could be just as, as bad, you know. So, you know, we, we are concerned, you know, parents, you know, you, we, and, and men, and men can go through the same thing too. I've, I've met some female bullies before and, and I saw their husbands. Yeah. I was like, whoa, <laughs> what's going on there? You know, so that can happen, you know, both ways. So it's tough. 
All right. So, Miss so Miss Visa, tell people where can they find you? I mean, you, now we come into Atlanta. We be in Atlanta in April. We want to invite you to come out to one of our meet and greets for Paula G. We do these things uh, periodically. Get people come out and meet the television host of WATC My Journey. And we will be out there in April to celebrate. So we hope hope have All an opportunity right. to meet you. So tell us where you are before yeah, I get we'll there. Yeah, we'll be looking for you. Yeah, well, yeah so find? every first Saturday we have open mic. And the amazing Moody Black is going to be with us on this first Saturday. We have it. Uh, it's also for the community. We do it to uh, promote our raise awareness to domestic violence. Awesome. And uh, But the show is not just all domestic violence. Mm-hmm. That's just the name of the show. The show is phenomenal. We have different local artists to come out and perform for us, and we have an amazing time. So that this first Saturday is coming up next Saturday on the 1st of December. We'll have Moody Black. He's a spoken word artist that traveled across the country, Mm. TEDx speaker, this amazing guy. And we are looking forward to having him and to perform for us. Also have the Freedom Express Workshop. Mm-hmm. The Freedom Express workshop is where people can come in if they are looking to figure out where they're stuck. We help them figure it out and get unstuck so they yeah. can move on, work with different projects that they have going on or want to have in their life. Uh, I have my book launch and release event that is going to be held on December 27th, also here in the Atlanta area. Oh, wow. yeah. And we have the Speak Life Show. The Speak Life show airs every first and third Thursday at 10 p.m. on live TV via Status Network. Mm. That's every first and third Thursday. And for all of the activities that we have, if anyone needs help or assistance from me, mm. and for also all of the events where we are, what, we're, what we have going on, they can go to www.vspeaklife.com, and that's V. S P E A K L I F E dot com. So you'll learn more information about Shifted Masterpiece Incorporated, the nonprofit. And just to be clear, we don't offer emergency services, but we can get you some resources. If you need emergency support, you would call 1 800 799 SA. S E. If you need, if you have an emergency, you call nine one one. Now, if you want to reach me again, that's V S P E A K L I F E V Speak Life dot com, and all of the information I just shared is right there. All Everything right. for my book, all the way to the services that I offer. Amen. Now, um, I got your website out there on Facebook Live for those of people watching this on Facebook Live. But if you're on Spreaker, uh. YouTube watching, you got to come on over to my Facebook page to get her website or just go to www.vspeaklife.com. All right. Now, who is Monique Washington? She's doing a lot of promotion for you out there. Who is she? Yeah, she's awesome. Hello, Monique. Thank you for <laughs> tuning in. She's another amazing supporter and friend. So we thank her for tuning in live on tonight. Miss that's Miss Monique Washington. She's also an author. So Monique, she'll probably drop in some information about yeah. her book in the comment feed or I'll drop it in for her mm-hmm. after the show. But she's awesome and an amazing, phenomenal young woman herself. Right. So you'll be hearing a lot of a lot more great things from her as as well. well Monique, you gotta inbox me so we can book you for a show. That's right. We're looking for authors. Yes, yes. That's right. Our concentration is on authors because we love to hear y'all stories. I mean, it's so um, benefiting to our to our our community, our radio community right now. All right, and because yes, we yes. do have um, a production in the Atlanta area, we want to get connect with you guys. So we're going to make sure you guys get invited to our next our next meet and greet. So um, and then there's going to be like a party that evening. So you know, we get a chance to sit down and talk and. Get to know each other, y'all. Come on, Monique. Hit me up. All right. Friend me. Be my friend. <laughs> All right. Man, this is exciting. I'm glad you told me. I I'm, I'm glad you didn't say, oh, I'm in North Carolina, South Carolina. Oh, I don't know if I can take that drive again. <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> I can't handle it. But but that is good, though. Man, that's, that's, that's my stop, my new stomping grounds now. All right, yeah, we got, all right, yeah, a lot of lot of uh, positive power people out there. So, um, 
Miss uh, Miss Kimmy Kim, you still with us? Where, where can people find Kimmy Kim in relation to Radio Magazine? Where can they find you? Absolutely. I'm with you, Jerry Royce. You can find Elation Magazine and Radio online. Uh, just uh, Google it, or you can just say elationmagazine.com. And Elation uh, Radio is on Jerry Royce, iHeart, Spotify, and on Kimmy Kim. And um, we got some really new good things coming up, and we pray that uh, whatever we do can be a benefit for you because it's all about empowering people. And unlike what you miss the uh, I believe in empowerment, and we must. You know, edify each other. That's right. That You're is speaking. what the Bible says. We must edify each other. Mm. It's not about us, but it's about we, not me. That's right. Speak so that, I just love you, Jerry, and thank you once again oh, for the too. platform. You're the reason why I'm in radio and uh, on internet radio because it has been like really fun. And I thank you so much, Jerry and Lady B. Please don't stop doing that fight because we need more people like you who are really. Mm. Uh, spreading awareness of why domestic violence happens, and we are survivors. That's yes. right, we gotta talk I'm about one it. of them, and you are too. <laughs> we got to talk about I, it. Yo. I, I really honored purple. Yes, that's right. Um, speaking um, of radio, I think yeah, this December make December twenty first make five years for Positive Power, so we're definitely going to have a radio week. Leading up to Christmas, okay. we're gonna talk about you know, um, you know, life in radio. Everybody always want to know more about the Batman. I'm gonna give you a chance. <laughs> we're gonna talk, so uh, we're gonna have some fun and talk about radio. You know how we got into this stuff and get to know everybody. Get a chance to get to know each other. So we're gonna do a lot of that uh, in December. It's gonna be a holiday. Um, we're gonna be introducing some Christmas program in my studio. So we're gonna be having Spirit to Spirit. In summer, Pearson's supposed to come here, and we're gonna uh, record some some um, some new Christmas music with those guys. So that's gonna be exciting, and we're building some relationships in the Del Marva area, y'all too. So I won't have to put pressure on, you know, your artists is coming from out of town, you know, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Alabama, all those places. Now I can start focusing on the Del Marva area, and then start introducing to you guys more radio, okay, and less TV. All right. So, so Batman don't be mad no more because <laughs> y'all not coming to see me. So it's all good. So, Miss Miss V, now uh, in, uh, invitation is open for you that uh, if you decide you want to travel up northeast up here to the D.C. and Baltimore, Washington area, uh, we love to have you. All right, that's right. We open I up, love it. Yeah, open up our studios for you and um, okay, and get to know you. Anybody a chance to get to know Miss V? Yeah. Okay, Mr. Jerry, I'm going to take you up on that. Now, when I come knocking, don't turn me away. Uh, we're going to turn you away. That's I what they did with Jesus when he was a baby. <laughs> no, don't no. do me. No, we won't do that to you. We, we love television and radio. That's our, that's our thing. That's right. We open All we, right. That's right. We open it up for you. All right. Yeah, we just, speaking of that, we just had um the life coaches of, of Arkansas was here. The, I'm sorry, the life coach school of Arkansas was here. Shout out to Yvette, Yvette Chapman and, and Victoria Evans was here. I'm calling her Dr. Evans because we great enroll her in our, our doctoral program with PTI. Uh, she was here. And of course the coach himself, Dr. Terrell Jenkins was here. Uh, this, uh, grad, he just released a, a graduate school, um, graduate school, released some students just graduated from his program, uh, out in Arkansas. And it's so exciting. I mean, he's showing so much growth. So we're so proud of that, brother. And um, let us know, you guys, where you guys are. You know, we're out there speaking. Audiences, let us know so we can put on Gospel Music Magazine with Summer. Summer comes here every two weeks, and she likes to talk about what people, what great things is being done in our community. So inbox me, y'all, what you guys are doing. All right? You don't want me to have to go out there and find stuff. <laughs> right? Right, Miss V? Send me your itinerary. Let us know where you guys are going to be. All right. Any final words? Any encouragement, Ms. V? Any last words for our audience? Last words. I just want to encourage everyone to always speak life, not strife. Because the more we speak life, the more positive outcomes will manifest. And that's my name is V Speak Life. You can find me at vspeaklife.com. Thank you so much, Jerry. And yeah. Ms. Kimmy, it was a pleasure meeting you. And to the audience, thank you guys for tuning in. Amen. You've been amazing. And it's not going to be the end of our relationship. We got plenty of radio for you. So we want to invite you to come out and hang out with us on Friday nights. They're going to love talking to you. Okay? 
Sounds All good. right. Can you hang? You can hang past I look forward 10 o'clock. To it. You can hang past 1130 because we, we, we're going late on Friday. <laughs> We're gonna do what we can do. That's right. Yeah, you and yeah, you and Monique. Yeah, bring Monique to your partner in crime. We we have a good time with the ladies. Okay. On the radio. That's right. Okay. Friday night. That's We're right. gonna put it down. Yeah, we'll send you guys an invite. Um, probably gonna be next Friday, not this Friday coming, but the Friday after. So look for that invite. All right, Kimmy Kim. Any okay. final any final words? Any encouraging words? What you got for us? Yes. During this holiday season, just know that it's really not about um, what you have, but just being thankful and grateful for what God has given you. Just remember that. That's right. Amen. Short and sweet. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of our show. We appreciate you guys. Stand by. We're going to listen to a little bit of uh, Miss Re- Ms. Re. Uh, one of her replays is going to be airing um, probably about an hour. Or so if you guys are up at 11 o'clock, catch a replay of uh, Pep Talk with Re. Right now, they out there in the Bahamas having fun and performing on the islands and on a cruise ship. So we, oh, man, I was like, oh, man, I should have gone on that trip. <laughs> They did mention it to me. I forgot. Anyway, y'all, let's get out of here. Take care, everybody, and have a great week. Can you feel the power? Did you feel the power, Kimmy Kim? Did you feel it? I felt the power. You felt the power. Miss V, did you feel the power? Did you feel it? And you know it. Man. Amazing show. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody, again, thank you for tuning in. I'm Jerry Woods Live Worldwide on Positive Power, Double X Side. Take care. See you next month. Peace, y'all. You're listening to Jerry Woods Live Worldwide Podcast. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of Double X Side. Listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Hi, this is Lady T, urban gospel artist from Jackson, Mississippi. You're listening to Positive Power Double XI Christian Radio on Spreaker Radio and Facebook Live. So keep it locked. Hey, 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 my name is Davis and I'm from Haiti, but I'm living in Dominican Republic. I'm here, Positive Power 21. Jerry Royce Live Worldwide. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah.